Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Fish Doctor. So, as you know, this is the series where we take a user submitted deck that might be having some issues and kind of talk about it, try to fix it, and in the end, come up with a brand new build of the deck. So, if you would like your own deck considered for a future Fish Doctor, make sure to leave a link in the comments of this video, or you can email me, saffronelive at mtggoldfish.com. Just make sure to make it clear that it is for Fish Doctor, because I don't want to accidentally take an instant deck 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 and do the doctoring and mess with it so just let me know in the comments that it is for fish doctor anyway this week we have a pretty interesting deck this deck isn't super crazy it is blue white tempo for standard but i feel like this deck is a really good deck for doctoring and teaching some lessons about standard deck building so this comes to us from erna coolum so thank you erna coolum for sending in a super sweet deck and a quick reminder before we do some fish doctoring for blue white tempo in standard if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy fish doctor in general it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so let's doctor up this blue white tempo deck so first off the reason that i chose this deck and want to talk about this deck is primarily the numbers we'll get into the individual cards and some questions there in a minute but the thing that stuck out about this deck is it has about a million Two ofs, Kanjali Sunwing, Hardikir, and Tempestion, Glyphkeeper, Lyra, Angel of Sanctions, Vizier, Many Faces, Blink of the Eye, Ether Sphere Harvester, so many cast out, Gideon of the Trials, like everything's a two of. And I get a ton of deck submissions, and this is something that I see fairly regularly. And it is one of the easiest mistakes to make when you first start building decks is you think, okay, uh, Kanjali Sunwing is cool, Tempestion is cool, Vizier is cool, Angel of Sanctions is cool, all these cards are cool, I'm just gonna play a couple of each of them. The thing is, when it comes to to building magic decks and standard decks any format really magic is a game of variance it is a high variance game every turn you are drawing a random card you start with seven in your hand so there's a ton of variance just naturally built into the game of magic which means one of the primary challenges of building a deck is what you're trying to do is reduce that variance and one of the easiest ways to reduce variance in magic and make your deck more consistent is playing four of the cards that you want to play so if you are building a deck and playing a ton of two ofs you're already playing a high variance game and your deck is going to be even higher variance because with two copies you're not really in favor of drawing any specific card in any specific game so sometimes you're going to really need the angel of sanctions and you're going to have a tempest gen sometimes you're going to really need the life gain from lyra but you're going to have a glyph keeper and that's one of the problems with playing just those really scattered numbers so one of our biggest challenges for this deck apart from some individual card choices we'll talk about in a minute is trying to up the numbers to four copies. So basically, one of the main things we want to do is take in turn two ofs into four ofs and also to make room for these four ofs cut some of the two ofs determine which cards are most important and best for our deck play four copies of those so we draw them regularly and can kind of fight through the variance of magic so of course this isn't true in 100 percent of cases there are reasons to play less than four copies of a card a great example of this is lyra lyra is extremely powerful it's a bane slayer angel but it's expensive it's five mana it's also legendary so you don't necessarily want four copies of Lyra in your deck because drawing too many is a bad thing also if you're playing a deck that draws a ton of cards uh, like our Saltai Madrotha deck that we played a while ago that's stocking the graveyard and getting all this stuff back there are reasons uh, tutoring is another one if you can tutor up the pieces you want with Court of Calling or Collected Company there are reasons to play one ofs or two ofs but in standard there's not a whole lot of them apart from expensive and legendary so Lyra makes a ton of sense as a two of on the other hand a card like Kinjali Sunwing you got to ask yourself do i want this effect in my deck uh, do i want a 2-3 flyer for 3 mana that makes my opponent's creatures enter the battlefield tapped. If you want that effect, you should be playing 4 copies of it. It's very hard to justify playing 2 copies of Kinjali Sunwings because you're going to have games against Mono Red with a bunch of haste creatures where you really want those creatures to enter tapped, but you don't have Kinjali Sunwing because you only have 2 copies. On the other hand, if you play 4 copies, you should have that effect consistently. So that's one of the big questions, is figuring out, do I want this card enough to play 
play as a four of in my deck? If the answer is no, then you probably should just not be playing that card at all. This is, uh, of course, an overgeneralization. We talked about some of the exceptions, expensive cards, legendary cards, decks with lots of card draw. So don't take that as gospel truth for every single deck. But as a general rule of thumb, asking yourself that question is a pretty solid way to improve your deck building decisions. We also just have some really weird numbers. Along with Kinjali Sunwing, we have Tempest Shin, two copies, History of Benalia, two copies. That doesn't even include Getting of the Trials, two copies, Ether Sphere Harvester, two copies. So we have 10 slots that are dedicated to three drops that are either creatures or pseudo creatures. But instead of playing something like four, four, and two, and really building our deck around the effect, we're playing two, 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 two which means we can't really control what we're gonna draw we're gonna have games where we have tempest gen and it has not much power and we really need a kinjali sunwing or we want history banalia to block up the ground against mono red and instead we have a kinjali sunwing so that is kind of step one of this deck fixing the numbers we see this as well in the five drop slot which is a little strange like i said lyra is a fine two of but it's a little bit odd to be playing two lyras two glyph keepers two angel of sanctions especially in a deck that has essentially zero card draw blink of an eye can uh, draw a card if we kick it but the deck isn't really churning through itself finding all these copies milling our embalmed creatures into the graveyard so kind of weird splits there as well and we even see it with the removal we have three seal away two cast out not that it's wrong to play those numbers, but it's kind of an awkward amount of removal for the deck. So that's kind of the first overarching theme of the deck is we have way too many two ofs and way too few four ofs, which is going to make the deck incredibly consistent. So that's step one of doctoring the deck is cutting some of the two ofs, upping the numbers on some of the two ofs. So instead of two and two, we're going to have four and zero of a lot of these cards by the time we're done. Before we look at the deck in its completed form, we got to talk a little bit about some of the individual card choices. So first off, Tempest Jin probably should not be in the deck. Tempest Jin is a two of. The problem is Tempest Jin only cares about basic islands, not to mention that it costs triple blue to cast. Our deck has nine basic islands, which means a lot of the time Tempest Jin is going to be maybe two power, three power at a maximum. And because we have seven non-blue sources of mana, it's going to be pretty unlikely that we're casting Tempest Jin on turn three. It's going to be more like turn four turn five turn six so tempest Jin is one of the easiest cards that we can cut because we just don't have a basic island mana base to really support its power and the amount of planes means we're not going to cast it on time very consistently also we have some weirdness with Heart of Kirin. So Heart of Kirin, another two of. The problem with Heart of Kirin is our deck is not very good at crewing it. If you look at our deck list, if we play Heart of Kirin on turn two, on turn three, our only ways of maybe crewing it is our two of Gideon of the Trials. Somehow Tempest Jin, if we went basic island, basic island, basic island in our non-island deck. So that's a long shot. Aether Sphere Harvester, if we do the double crew, which isn't going to happen on turn three anyway. And then we're kind of waiting for Shalai is our only four drop that can actually crew Heart of Kirin. So if you're playing Heart of Kirin in your deck with its high crew cost, you either need a lot of Planeswalkers or you need a lot of creatures that can crew it. That's why we see Scrap Heap Scroungers, the Knights, for example, the two drop Knight Cycle. Those cards are great with Heart of Kirin because they give you a way to Heart of Kirin on turn two, turn three, play a creature, crew and attack. Our deck can't do that. It's very unlikely that we're going to be able to crew it. In fact, the only real crew members of of Heart of Cure, at least consistent ones, are the five mana Angel of Sanctions and Lyra Dawnbringer. And if you're tapping your Angel of Sanctions or Lyra Dawnbringer to attack with a 4 4 flyer, you're not really coming <laughs> coming out that far ahead. You're kind of just doing the same thing. So I guess you get in some hasty damage because you can tap the crew member right away. But Heart of Kirin, very awkward fit in the deck. So definitely on the list of cards that we can cut. Another awkward choice for the deck is Vizier of Many Faces. So Vizier of Many Faces, cloning can be very powerful, but our deck isn't especially good for cloning. We have a lot of legendary creatures. Lyra Dawnbringer, Shalai Voice of Plenty, Walking Ballista, not legendary, but if you copy it, it enters with no counters. So we're really stuck on just a couple of creatures that are good for actually copying. Glyph Keeper, Angel of Sanctions, and those creatures come down after Vizier Many Faces. So Vizier is not even really a four drop in our deck. It's more like a six drop, a seven drop. And that's assuming that we happen to draw one of our two Glyph Keepers or one of our two Angel of Sanctions. 
Dragons. So most likely we're going to be playing like a Trickster, Kinjali, Sunwing, copying that. And that's just not very exciting. Like spending four mana to get a 2-2 Merfolk Trickster or a 2-3 Kinjali, Sunwing just doesn't really make Vizier worth it in our deck. So I think that's another card we can add to the cut list. Removal wise, we just don't have enough of it. Three seal aways means we're likely to get run over by aggro. Two cast out means we have minimal answers to our opponent's planeswalkers and non-creature permanents. Blink of an eye is fine, but it doesn't make up for the lack of removal. So adding more removal to the deck and making it more consistent with four copies of some of our better removal spells, definitely a big step in the right direction. Also, deck only has a total of 23 lands, which is really cutting it pretty close considering the deck has a lot of five drops we have six five drops so with this deck especially since we have irrigated farmland to kind of minimize the chances of flooding out since we can discard lands i think we really need to go up to at least 24 most likely 25 lands or we're gonna have a lot of games where we are stuck on four lands not being able to cast our liar and not being able to cast our angel of sanctions so with those changes in mind here is the doctored build of Blue White Tempo for standard. So as you can see, we kept the same foundation of the deck. Trickster, Ballista, we did change up the three drop slot quite a bit. We went up to four History of Benalias, but we also added in Champion of Wits. So that's kind of my pet card. I think it works really, really well in decks like this because it lets you filter away bad lands. We have things like Angel of Sanctions for a little bit of graveyard synergy. We also max out on our good removal, four cast outs, four seal aways. So the basic idea of this deck and the doctoring of this deck was just to make it more consistent. So rather than than having these super high variance games where sure maybe we draw our liar at the right time but then other games we're drawing things that aren't lyras is making everything four ofs or as many things as possible four of so you can see instead of the two 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 we have four walking blisters four merfolk tricksters in the two drop slot four champion of wits which further increases consistency by giving the deck a little bit of card draw along with four history of banalias in the three drop slot we can keep the two gideons and we can keep the two ofs of the expensive stuff two shallies that's fine. Two Lyras, that's ideal. Two Angel of Sanctions, pretty expensive, hard to play more than that in the five drop slot. So this deck keeps a lot of the sweet aspects, or the same play style at least, the Blue White Tempo play style of the original build, but it should be able to play in a much more consistent manner. So as I mentioned, four Champion of Wits, cutting the Kinjali Sunwing. If you love Kinjali Sunwing, you can play that over the Champion Wits. I would play four of them. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Champion Wits. I think that the consistency it adds by drawing cards is really helpful and a big deal. But if you want to, go ahead and play four Kinjali Sunwings. Cut the Champion Wits. Uh, that's a personal preference type thing. Kinjali Sunwing, probably better against aggro. Decent, better blocker than Champion Wits. The entering battlefield tap can be relevant against Glory Burners and Bombat Couriers. So I don't think it's wrong to play Kinjali Sunwing over Champion Wits. As I mentioned, we have a four removal suite now four seal ways to deal with aggro four cast outs which is really easy to play as a four of because if it's bad we can cycle it for just one mana so there's very little downside to running the full four cast outs one blink of an eye then we added two more lands up to 25 lands so we max out adding the fourth copy of irrigated farmland one copy of field of ruin giving us 25 lands which especially with champion of wits in our deck to filter through extra lands and an extra cycling land better to err on the side of having one too many lands maybe this is a 24 and a half land deck but with the champion wits and the cycling lands definitely better to be have one too many lands because we can always cycle or discard them than to have one too few lands and not cast our big powerful angels on time so there's the original deck, kind of scattered, definitely showing a lot of sweet cards. I think that we fixed a lot of the problems. We got rid of the cards that are just awkward. Uh, the Heart of Curing without crew members, Tempest Shin without enough islands, Vizier Many of Faces without enough targets, and then we also just made the deck more consistent by playing four ofs instead of two ofs. So I think the lesson, if you take one thing away from this, is when you're building a deck and you're trying to decide on what card to play in your deck, ask yourself if it's worth having that card as a four of if you want the card you should want it enough to have it be a four of if you don't want it enough to be a four of then you probably should look for another card in that slot that is going to be good enough for being a four of in your deck of course
course, you can see that doesn't work in every case. As we mentioned, expensive cards, legendary cards, top end threats, those are fine to play as less than four ofs, but you will have much, much more success if you err on the side of making things four ofs than playing two of everything and just hoping that in the naturally high variance game of Magic, you draw your cards in the right order, because you are going to have a lot of clunky, unfun games if you're just playing two of every cool thing rather than four of a handful of cool things. So anyway, that's been our Blue White Tempo Deck Doctoring. Again, if you would like your own deck considered for a future edition of Deck Doctor, make sure to leave a link in the comments or you can email me, saffronolive at mtggoldfish.com. Let me know what you think. If you have some other ideas on improving this deck, other lessons we can learn from this deck, other cards that could be included in the deck, let me know all that in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.